Hello friends, this video on wind storms and cyclones part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. <clears throat> so now the question is, from where do these wind currents generate? How it starts? How it originates? So we got to know that air moves from one region to another due to difference in pressure. But when you talk about the wind currents, <clears throat> so uh, in the newspapers, you might have seen that a lot of times you get news like uh, there is a cyclone which has taken place in Ursa or there are strong wind currents in some regions of Karnataka. So these kind of news keep coming up. So how exactly these wind currents get generated? I mean, at the end of it, we want to know that why air needs to move from one region to another. <coughs> So here we will again experiment with the balloons in order to understand the mechanism. Now in order to understand this mechanism we need to first talk about a very important property of air. So and that property of air is what will be seen with this experiment. So here what we do? We take a test tube or a boiling tube which is very commonly available in your laboratory. So you just take a slender tube. That's it. Take a balloon and tie the balloon over the neck of the tube. So the balloon is not inflated right now. It is just tied tightly using a thread or anything to the uh, mouth of the, to the neck of this test tube. Now what we do, we put this entire tube inside a beaker which contains some cold water. So cold water in the sense maybe water at normal temperature. So what happens to the balloon? The balloon remains as it is. There is no change in the balloon. Now what we do is we take the same tube and put it in a beaker containing hot water. And what do we see? We see that the balloon gets inflated. Now just think how temperature played a role in inflating the balloon. Now when the balloon gets inflated, what is contained inside the balloon? Nothing but air. So basically when it was put in the hot water, the test tube to some extent got heated up. So this heat was responsible for inflation of the balloon. So this heat caused the air inside the balloon to get expanded. So air expanded. Now when air expanded, it needed more space. It is something like <clears throat> in order to keep this balloon, you need very small space. But when you inflate it, it becomes big, you need more space. So inside the air is actually expanding, so it needs more space. And balloon being elastic provides that flexibility to expand and that's why it expands. But what do we learn from this experiment? So this expansion of air happened due to heating. Therefore, we can say that air expands when heated. So when we heat air, it expands and this property is very very important in order to understand the way wind currents get generated because there we will see this property of air plays a very important role. Now we will perform another experiment using paper cups and here also we will see uh, we will conclude with the same property of air. So here what we do we take two paper cups put them uh, inverted and then and please make sure that the paper cups are empty because when you invert it anyways, if there is anything it will come down. But please ensure that it is empty. So hang them inverted from a rod. So you take a rod, take two threads and then hang the two paper cups in this way. Then what you do, you take a thread and tie it at the middle of the rod so that this rod itself hangs and it can stay in a balance. Now since both the paper cups they weigh the same, so they have the same weight, therefore when you put it, when you actually hang this entire rod and this entire setup, so what happens is after some time it, it is in a stable position where both the paper cups are at the same level, right? So this is pretty simple and you can do it on your own. Now what you can do is you place a burning candle below a paper cup. So just below one paper cup. So let's call this as paper cup one and let's call this as paper cup two. So below paper cup one, we have placed a candle. 
Now, due to the flame of this candle, what would happen? So it it will kind of heat up this uh, heat up the air which is present here in this surroundings. The air will get heated up, and what have we learned that air expands on heating. So what do you think will happen in this case? Now, as we start heating up paper cup one, after some time, what we observe is gradually paper cup one is moving up, and therefore the entire balance of the two paper cups gets destroyed. So the paper cup one is going up and the paper cup two is coming down. However, there is no external force which is being applied to for this change to happen. So the only thing that we provided was this heat. And when this heat was provided, the air in this area, the air got expanded. Now when the air expanded, it needed more space. So it created more space for itself and it pushed the paper cup up. And that's why the paper cup one moved up and the entire balance got disturbed because when this moves up, obviously the other one has to come down. It is like the seesaw which you would have seen kids playing in the garden. So if this comes down, this has to go up. If this comes down, this has to go up. So that's how it is. So in this case, since it goes up, so obviously paper cup two comes down and the entire balance gets disturbed. So here also we see that with this experiment also, we understand that when we heat up air, air gets expanded. <clears throat> so th the logic behind this is pretty simple. So, so let's try to understand this concept of expansion. So let us say we have this much of space. And in, within this much of space, you have these many particles. So that is one scenario where you see that a specific number of particles are localized within a uh, region. Now, if this entire region starts expanding, so suddenly instead of this much space, now they have this much space and the same number of particles are like scattered. So they are like present away from each other. So what happened? Now, as soon as it expanded, it needed more space. So it occupied more space. So that was one thing. The second thing is that when it occupies more space, so basically the particles get spread over a larger area. So overall, the weight of this particle, this entire thing as such, it reduces when compared to this. So it, it is like uh, uh, something which is uh, light, hollow. Why is it hollow? Because there is a lot of empty space in between. So that is going to be lighter when compared to something which is very compact and dense. So the same thing happens here. And the same thing happens with air as well. So when we heat up air, it expands. And when air expands, it becomes lighter. And when it becomes lighter, it tends to rise up. And that's what happened here. So here the air which is present here, this air was heated up, expanded, it became lighter. And that's why it went up. So it, as it rose up, it pushed cup one also in the upward direction and as a result the entire balance got disturbed. So this is another experiment which tells us very beautifully how air expands when heated. And this same thing can be observed in a lot of things. For example, when you look at the candle flame, where does the flame go? So the flame tends to move up. When you look at the incense sticks, which we often burn while doing puja, so the smoke tends to go up. When you burn a piece of paper, the smoke, where does it go? It tends to go up. So why is it always that smoke always tends to go up? That's because air expands on heating. So whenever you're burning the paper, so the air above it, it starts expanded, expanding when heated and therefore the air becomes lighter and the warm air rises up and the smoke which we see is nothing but a warm Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.